Okay, so uh, today we are going to discuss uh, introduction to inventing traditions by Eric Hobsbawm. As the name suggests, the essay deals with the subject of uh, tradition. The subject in itself is quite important because in this uh, essay, the writer will try to give us a theoretical account of the phenomena of traditions. Now, the importance of this essay lies in the fact that we all uh, live in tradition-bound societies in our social and in our personal lives, the influence of traditions is quite tremendous. Now, in a nutshell, if I give you an idea about the contents of this essay, in a nutshell, we can say that the essay can be read at three levels. One, it tries to define traditions. So this will be our first uh, concern today in this lecture. What is the definition of traditions according to Eric Hobsbawm, an important uh, British historian uh, with a leftist orientation? As far as his, his approach is concerned, he adheres to a cultural materialist approach in his uh, treatment of history. So the first part of the essay tries to define the phenomena of traditions. Because as I said, we all live in tradition-bound societies. Uh, right from our birth, now, the important thing, one thing which can make you realize the important of, importance of this subject is that traditions are something we are born in. Right from the time of our birth, we are initiated into various social, religious, and even political, cultural traditions. And we continue to have a very intimate kind of an encounter with these traditions throughout our lives. This is a very important symptom of organized societies. We do now. First thing we need to understand is that as far as our life is concerned, as far as our the nature of our society is concerned, we are part of very organized social orders. We are members of very organized social, religious, and national communities. So, uh, the more organized a society, the greater the role of traditions. This is probably uh, the biggest assumption that we can proceed with in our understanding of Eric Hobbes bomb. Okay. There are old traditions, there are new traditions. You know that certain traditions like the feudal traditions, patriarchal traditions, religious traditions, social traditions, cultural traditions are very old. They are centuries old and it is a quite a remarkable fact that these traditions have continued to you know, exist for the past three, four, five centuries. They do get transformed with time, but as Hobsbawm will point out in the later half of the essay, they keep adapting themselves to the changing circumstances. 
in addition to old uh, traditions we also uh, continue to be exposed to new traditions for instance uh, the phenomena of nation and nationalism is quite recent coming to the first point with which i began i said the essay can be read at three levels it tries to define traditions it tries to a certain the function of traditions what is the function of traditions then the writer tries to distinguish between tradition and custom on one hand and tradition and convention on the other hand in the last part of the essay the writer links the term inventing traditions with some of the recent new traditions that have emerged during the last century uh, or a little uh, before that so the first part deals with the definition now let me begin with the definition before and uh, while we define uh, the term tradition or while we read the definition of the term tradition uh, in uh, hobsbaum's essay uh, we will try to note down the points of salience as given in this definition what are the points of salience because when we define something okay, we create some points of salience so i am reading from the text traditions which appear or claim to be old are often quite recent in origin and sometimes invented so this is a very interesting point of departure traditions which appear or claim to be old are often quite recent in origin and sometimes invented this is a internal contradiction okay, which the writer there is a counterbalance of past and present in traditions okay. the writer is it is quite evident that the writer is suggesting that traditions have a claim over the past they claim a continuity with the past if we use a theoretical expression we can say that traditions freely appropriate the past in order to come into existence there is an appropriation of the past so he will try to uh, dwell on this appropriation of the past by traditions so traditions which appear to be or claim to be old are often quite recent in origin and sometimes invented then this is i believe the definition this is how he defines invented tradition is taken to mean a set of practices normally governed by overtly or tacitly accepted rules and of a ritual of symbolic nature which seek to inculcate certain values and norms of behavior by repetition which automatically implies continuity with the past let me draw your attention to some terms which according to me are very significant here it is a set of practices normally governed by overtly or overtly tacitly accepted rules or ritual or of a symbolic nature which aims to inculcate certain values and norms of behavior by repetition so set of practices ritual of a symbolic nature which inculcate certain values in the subjects of a society okay and the act of repetition these are some of the basic aspects which are integral to the idea of traditions so this appears to be quite a fresh 
perspective on traditions because it differs from the normal understanding of traditions because we are born into traditions we never question them we take them to be natural we take them to be uh, you know something that has to be taken for granted by us we also take them to be timeless this definition goes against that normal way of approaching uh, traditions then another thing we must note is that he links the emergence of traditions with the term invention so the, if something is invented that means okay, that something okay, ha, does not have a divine a transcendental or a natural basis okay it is something that comes into emergence as a result of social requirements and that something has a social function to perform so this is the basic idea so i started with drawing your attention to the basic thing that there is an appropriation of the past later on he he will use the term factitious the claim over the past is not real but artificial but that doesn't make tradition you know uh, equivalent to a lie please okay eric hobsbawm is not suggesting that traditions are uh, fallacies he on the contrary is saying that they, when they come into existence okay, because of certain factors which we will discuss later on okay they claim to have a connection with the past okay that is a, one of the requirement but they are not uh, entirely baseless okay? they have a social function to uh, perform then the second thing is that traditions have a symbolic nature okay so they have a symbolic nature they symbolize certain important ideological principles that uh that are present behind our social life that are connected with our social beliefs so they are ideo they have a ideological basis then let me read a little more in order to further uh expatiate on this okay, concept of tradition as rendered in theoretical terms by eric hobsbawm however i am reading from the text however in so far as there recording is recording in progress yeah. however however uh please don't record on your devices i am already recording it i will give the recording to you however in so far as there is such reference to a historic past the peculiarity of invented traditions is that the continuity with it is largely fictitious in short they are responses to novel situations which take the form of reference to old situations or which establish their own past by quasi obligatory repetition it is the contrast between constant change and innovation of the modern world and the attempt to structure at least some parts of our social life within it as unchanging and invariant that makes the invention of tradition so interesting uh so interesting for historians of the past two centuries now here the definition is extended 
by bringing in two more aspects. One, the very important and a defining characteristic linked with invariance. Traditions are, they, as I said, claim to have a connection with the past. They claim to have a basis in the past. So, uh, and in connection with this, the writer says that the basis in the past is more factitious than real. It is more artificial than real. But why do traditions invoke the past? That is a very important question which I will try to answer here. You must be thinking that we are time and again emphasizing this appropriation of the past without discussing the reason for this appropriation. The reason is very simple. Traditions, the answer to this according to me, is that traditions try to establish a continuity with the past. They generate a sense of continuity. Now, let me draw your attention to a line here. It is the contrast between constant change and innovation of the modern world and the attempt to structure at least some parts of our social life within it as unchanging and invariant. The world continues to change. Social change is integral to our life. World is the world around us is characterized by constant change. But there is always a desire in the collective psychology of human beings to account for this change, to account for this social change as something logical. This can be, the, the origin of this can be traced to the liberal humanist idea that our life does not progress arbitrarily. We want life to progress according to, because we always, we always believe that life has a purpose, that we have progressed towards a grand plan. So, the feeling that change is sudden and arbitrary would lead to a sense of insecurity and unease. And they, their traditions come because they present change as something that happens in a logical manner in continuity with the past. And that is why Hobsbawm says that the greater the speed of change, the greater the invention of tradition. They are, this is how they are linked. The more the change, the more would be the need to invent traditions. So they are, according to him, they are a way of dealing with social change. So please remember these ideas that there is a counterbalance of past and present. There is a appropriation of past. But let me remind you, lest I should forget, past is not appropriated uh, blindly 
indiscriminately no the past is appropriated selective every tradition traces its link with one or the other phase of historical uh, uh, historical past so history and the past are not appropriated are not used indiscriminately every tradition selects one or the other phase of history according to its requirements for instance if uh, one nationalism has a religious character it will uh, rely on or use a religious past so you can uh, at different times uh, use different historical phases related to religion related to kingship related to the cultural life of a people i hope this is clear to you now i move on to the next part the next part deals with the difference between tradition and custom on the one hand and tradition and convention on the other hand let me read a line or two tradition in this sense must be distinguished clearly from custom which dominates so called traditional societies now please try to for a moment uh remember how commonly we use the term custom but i believe that you must have a realization that we normally use the terms tradition and custom interchangeably without being conscious of their difference so tradition in this sense must be distinguished clearly from custom which dominates so called traditional societies the object and characteristic of traditions including invent invented ones is invariant so we already we have already alluded to this that invariance the desire to a uh, link our life with a continuity these are some of the you know, uh, functions of tradition custom has greater flexibility where tra whereas tradition claims to be invariant to be unchanging custom is something which has greater flexibility as is and is linked with the idea of variance or change but that does not mean that tradition and custom are antithetical terms are opposed to one another no they are quite closely linked now how does he define tradition uh sorry custom custom in traditional societies has the double function of motor and flywheel it does not preclude innovation and change up to a certain point though evidently the requirement that it must appear compatible or even identical with a uh, precedent imposes substantial so it what is meant here is that custom exhibits greater flexibility but this flexibility is not unlimited it changes within certain customs keep on changing within certain limits then 
a few lines after this there is this passage custom cannot afford to be invariant because even in traditional societies life is not so he gives a few examples which i have skipped customary or common law still shows this combination of flexibility in substance and formal adherence to uh, the to precedent so there is a uh, greater flexibility but that doesn't mean that custom unlike tradition has unlimited capacity to change it changes but according to some precedent its relationship with tradition is uh quite we can say congenital in nature custom emerges from tradition so we can describe the relationship of custom and tradition in the following ways we can say that custom is the practical implementation of tradition in various practices if we think of it we can say that whereas the institution of marriage is a tradition bound institution the customs keep on changing they exhibit some variation but another important aspect of the relationship between custom and tradition is that a uh, customs tend to balance the the opposite social forces that are involved in a certain tradition he gives the example of uh villages claim to some common land or right by custom from time immemorial uh often expresses not a historical fact but the balance of forces in the constant struggle of village against lords or against other villages so customs often come into existence as a force that balances the interests of the opposite parties in an institution or in a tradition but even in the case of custom one thing is very important that there is formal adherence to precedent custom may change customs may change but they do not uh defy the inherent logic of tradition if we have a custom related to patriarchal society it may to a certain extent uh accommodate the interests of women but the basic and essential principles of patriarchy will be maintained so so in a nutshell we can say customs are not subversive in the sense that they challenge the basic logic of it they are not subversive they follow precedent but they do accommodate the the you know interests of different groups involved in a tradition so now we come to the third part in which the writer deals with the third term that is 
convention. The second, I am reading from the text. The second less important distinction that must be made is between tradition in our sense and convention or routine, which has no significant ritual or symbolic function as such, though, me, though it may acquire. Uh, so I am repeating, I think I missed a word. A, a second less important distinction that must be made is between tradition in our sense and convention or routine. Now, he uses a term okay, which can you know, uh, give us some idea about the third term that is convention. He uses the term routine. Routine. And then further goes on to say that societies since the industrial revolution have naturally been obliged to invent, institute, or develop new networks of such convention or routine more frequently than this one. In so far as they function best when turned into habit, automatic procedure, or even reflexes. Now he uses in a quick succession three more terms in order to define convention. What are they? Habit, automatic procedure, reflex action. What does this tell us about the term uh, convention? One, conventions are equated with routine actions. They have, unlike tradition and custom, no symbolic function. Since conventions are related with habit or automatic routine, so we can say that their origin, their existence is linked with the technical requirements of an industrialized society. Because the more organized or industrialized a society is, the more uh, I mean, the more industrialized the society is, the greater is need, the greater is the need for managing technical procedures because we basically deal with machines or with some set practices, if not machines. So, conventions have merely a, uh, a function related to automatic procedures, which help in the smooth functioning of an industrialized and modern society. They facilitate practical operations and are necessary for the smooth discharge of our professional duties. <laughs> 